eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light To the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light shine through, if you believe it's true, baby won't you let the light shine through.
Hey guys, welcome to the Elite FPL call-in with myself and Steve-O. Hello everybody in chat. I see a lot of familiar faces there. You guys have been here for quite some time waiting for us to go live. I see Cameron Rawcliffe, FPL Yeah Pitch, Joel Street, Daily Lama's in chat as well, Emilian, um, Taffy Mushosi. Welcome uh, to the stream. I don't know if, I think I've read your name out in the past. We've got Ad Whitfield here as well. We've got a lot of new subscribers today. So if you're just new to subscribing to the stream, then uh, welcome everybody. You guys are more than welcome here and uh, we look forward to speaking to you in discord um got a bit of an announcement to make first thing just want to clear things up straight from the start of the stream you may have noticed over the last three to four weeks that we've been one member down on the podcast that member being dan um so basically the direction that we're taking the podcast in this season we're going to be a lot more hand like hardcore um we're going to be doing a lot more streams and um just basically it's kind of differed with Dan's um, Dan's vision on the podcast. So our visions are kind of split. So Dan has uh, now um, gone his, gone on his own way. Um, so f- moving forward, it'll be just me and Steve-O. Um, I believe Steve-O's got a, um, a statement from Dan just to say, you know, a few a few things. But I do want to say thank <coughs> you to Dan for all of his efforts um, over last season uh, and working with us. But, uh, but going forward, it will just be me and Steve-O. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I, I just want to make a, 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 a very good point on, on Dan, really. At the end of the day, if it wasn't for Dan and myself, this wouldn't even exist now. I can't... Can you remember, Jason, when um, we started the videos for the private Facebook group? Was it 2017 or or literally last year, summer, last year? Can you remember when we were uploading them? I'm sure it was last year. Uh, Maybe it was, it was last before. It was last year. It was last year, so... Um, it, it was last yeah, year, yeah, right, yeah. So we... Um, we basically were doing just private um, group videos uh, via a Zoom a- a app. And basically, Jason jumped on board. We're not going to go through the history of that again. But yeah, like Jason said, um, due to various factors, uh, Dan's unable to quote unquote commit to the podcast like myself and Jason. But he ain't going anywhere. Uh, you heard him live last night. You heard him live, I think, the day before the day before that. You always welcome him back. He's always um, a wonderful guest on, and I'm sure in the future we will have him as a guest host. But I just want to read this out from Dan, um, just to say that, so this is statement, I'm genuinely, sta- I'm genuinely sad not to be able to commit the time to the podcast that you guys deserve. The Elite FBL community is something truly unique and special. The amazing feedback and support from you guys throughout the last season means a lot to me, and I'm proud to have been part of that journey. I wish my good friends the best on growing the channel even further. I'm taking inspiration from their hard work and dedication to focus on my own business. I look forward to being part of the community and hope to feature on the show again in the near future. And yeah, again, um, I'm sure everybody uh, wishes Dan the best. Like I said, he's not going anywhere. He will always be um, probably joining the Discord as much as he can and everything. And uh, yeah, we just um, wish him all the best, Jason. But yeah. um, let's... Absolutely. Uh, on, on, on that on that slightly sad note, um, we we move on to all things fantasy football. And I did put out a tweet earlier on, basically, and this is kind of like the focus on the show today. Really, it's um, we want to get your guys' opinions on. Simply put, what advice you would give to a brand new player to the fantasy football game? And I, I took inspiration from this from FPL Defender last night, Jason, when he came on and he said it's basically his first season and. Uh, in fact, there's Dan now in the chat. So Dan's there. He's alive and well. But yeah, I, I took inspiration from FBL Defender talking to us last night about Davy P um, speaking to him about and just giving him advice for the Discord group. And I was just like, Do you know what? Let's just make this a topic today and everything. And um, yeah, I mean, straight away, Jason, I'll ask you instantly, what one single piece of advice would you give to a brand new player for fantasy football? Um, I've got a couple of pieces of advice. I, I don't know what you've written down, but um, it's a common question that is asked in forums, uh, new players coming into the game. But um, uh, yeah, for myself, I think the one that I can relate to the most is um, don't react to freak scoring rotation risk players. Like I remember one, um, I can't remember what game it was now. I've probably be able to Google it. Nick Powell for United scored. And I was like, got to get him in. I think, yeah, I transferred him in my team. And did he play the next game? No. This is like, this is very, um, this is years and years ago. And I think it's one of those where, like, you will get flashes in the pan with players that score that are fringe players or, or not even 
not even even cons- into consideration with first team. And I think that my point would be just to to, <laughs> to again not to react to freak scoring players. Yeah, I, I mean, I, my my um my piece of advice would be simply this: make sure when you when you're selecting your squad, buy proven Premier League players, and also have playing players on your bench. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing this year, where people are basically it's a bench full of very very punty. Um, Guys, I mean, let's be brutally honest about things here. It's Den Donker, Kelly and Greenwood. Well, Kelly, I can't see him getting anywhere near that Palace defence unless they're absolutely desperate for him to play due to injury. Greenwood, I'm sure you'll have to tell me more than me, but I just can't see him getting many minutes whatsoever this season. I could be proven wrong. He could play about 50 minutes per game. I don't know, but I very, very much doubt it. And, yeah, I've been looking over my team and I'm thinking to myself, Steve-O, in fact, this is another piece of advice. Take your own advice and bring in players which are predominantly going to be playing um, or a part of the team that you've chosen them from. And I'm pretty set on my team. But uh, we had a few responses on Twitter, which is at EliteFBO. And... uh, FBL Boona came in with them. Um, use the majority of your budget on your starting eleven, and have a relatively uh, small budget left with the probable. St- pretty much agreeing with what I just said with the probable starters on your bench. Um, a Twitter handler called Ignorant Player simply put: Be patient. Leave real life football politics to one side outside of fantasy football. I like that one. When you're making a move, make sure you look into the stats before you make this move. And more importantly, and I agree with this, I think we all get sucked into taking this game too seriously. He says, have fun with the game. I mean, I I take it too seriously because there's money at stake. Uh, We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, FPL Poker, don't panic after game week one. Rip up your plans and think they're not working. Trust me, I cannot, I cannot, I I said it last night. I cannot wait for Norwich to score against Liverpool and everybody's basically getting rid of Van Dyke, Trent Alexander, Arnold Robinson straight away. Cannot wait for that. And uh, basically, I think Gatton, our, one of our regular contributors, Gatton in the Discord, sums it up perfectly, really. This game is a marathon, not a sprint. And yeah, that's why I've kind of... I, I'm changing my strategy to look at fixtures rather than the the overall season. I think, you know what, I can change players in and out. I don't have to rely on, I don't know, Harry Kane the whole of the season. You know, just, yeah. just stick to the fixtures and away you go. Don't set, like, I, I wrote down here as well, don't set up your team like in real life. Like, so try to avoid CDM, C, CMs that are playing like a, a midfield, pure midfield or deep role in midfield and and also like centre backs don't stack up on centre backs try and go for left wing backs left backs right backs um you know players that are on set pieces as well um just factor in like penalty takers set piece takers for the clubs that you want to be bringing players in for i mean these these are things that are that seem really simple and straightforward to a lot of people watching the stream right now but there are people out there that literally do set the team up with um you know matic which um good luck yes. to you good luck um but i think i think yeah get into that chat jason there's a lot of talk regarding well let's be honest here dan and uh, what we've just been discussing now but just quickly uh shaban breaking news crystal palace have completed the sign of gary cahill on a free transfer reporting sky news oh wow so there we have it okay gary cahill to crystal palace <clears throat> will that bolster the attack to the point where people consider getting him in um obviously they've lost Wan Bissaka. Um, I think that's a good signing for Palace. Um, I think it. They definitely need something. I've, I've actually got. I'm predicting, and I think other people as well are predicting Palace to have a bad season. Um, I yeah. don't think they're going to have a good season at all. Um, so they need to start bolstering up their defence. And you know, will they keep? Will they manage to keep hold of Zaha? That's another question. Um, but uh, bye bye Kelly. Daily Lama says. Um, but I've got a question for you guys about Lundstrom as well. I don't think he's nailed, but I see a lot of people going for Lundstrom in their defence for their for like budget. 
uh, option. I just want to know what your opinion is, guys, in chat. Um, hi, guys. So John Harris is in chat saying, hi, guys. Just got back off holiday. Nice surprise to get back to a live stream. Yes, welcome <laughs> welcome back, John Harris. I hope you had a nice time on holiday. Um, welcome to the chat, Hick76. Hammer Dave's there too. Anuno Santu, uh, Carl Kirsten. All the new guys that may be watching that haven't yet hit that subscribe button. No, you know, not trying to state anything there. But uh, football fans in chat, don't be, but that's a good point. Don't be biased towards the team that you follow. Um, and Brew, Brew's in chat as well. So a lot of the regulars. Um, we've got a few things to talk about. Um, I just wanted to, to ask, um, I read an interesting piece earlier on about Pablo Formal or Formel for um, West Ham. Um, priced in at 6.5. Could be one of those players that you know may consider for West Ham if you're looking at West Ham. There is an attacker. Um, he has been playing out of position, him and Lanzini, taking turns to play as a striker off of Allaire. So that's one to watch, one to have on your radar. Pablo Formal. What you know, let us know what your thoughts are in chat about him. Um, just a player that I've uh, made a note of. Um, but that's another thing as well. We had apparently a, a, there's been a German publication called Kicker that's announced that a 110 million euro move has been made for from uh, for for Leroy Sane from Bayern mm. Munich. So it'd be interesting to see where you know if that's any substance to that whether Leroy Sané will stay at uh, Man City or not. I personally think he will, um, but we'll have to wait and see. It's just all all rumours at the moment. <laughs> you're, you're thinking he'll stay, do you? I, I, think, I think he's gone. I, do you I really think, think based he's on gone? All, yeah, I just think that the way uh, Pep Guardiola seemed to have treated him last season, I think this... What happened on Sunday, what, what me and Clement LaRue kind of agreed on being like a, a quote-unquote kind of like a fake injury, get me off this team. I'm just really not interested. I don't know. I don't want to hurt myself before my big move to to Bayern Munich. I think I think Man City would be would be mad not to, would be mad to turn down the amount of money for Sane. As, as good as the guy is, if he's not going to want to play for, for Man City, you don't want a, a toxic atmosphere or a toxic player in your team. So... I think take the money and, and, and go, basically. Okay. Um, Steve, very qu quickly, have you got, um, have you pay is your PlayStation or TV on? Because your internet connections, your, no, your camera's shrunk. No, your camera's shrunk. Is, uh, let me just, let me just, let me just re recall you a second very quickly while I read out um, a few of the things that are going on in chat. I just want to just recall. Uh, <laughs> see if that fixes it. There we go. Is it going to fix it? There we go. We fixed him. There we go. Uh, so, yes. Gomez will start on Friday, says Sparky in chat. Yeah, I think he'll be nailed in that Liverpool team, I think, from now on. Next to Van Dijk. Wilson v. King is killing me, says FPL Fozzy. Um, I think there's... I mean, if it's going to be Wilson v. King and you've got to choose between the two, then I think Wilson is by far the better pick. Um, I actually said Alaire's name correctly. So, Steve, is there anything else you want to cover before we uh, look at um, bringing people onto the show? Yeah, just a quick one, really. You mentioned um, before we came on air this Keane of Everton. He's finally been announced as a seven million striker for Everton. It'd be oh, interesting yes. to hear what chat think of that pricing. I, I, I think they should have put him at six point five at most. Mm. I, I just, I just, I just think for a 19-year-old coming all the way to a different country and everything, it, it never seems to work out well. I'm probably going to be proven completely wrong, but I, I, there's just something that tells me that he's just going to be a complete, from a fantasy football perspective, a flop. A lot of people seem to confuse me when it comes to, uh, for instance, Aaron Wan-Bissaka last year. I didn't think he was rubbish. I meant from a fantasy football perspective, he, I just couldn't stand him. But also. A very interesting one here. Adrian has left West Ham and moved to Liverpool. With Simon Mignolet moving to Bruges, I think it's. Yeah. Yeah, very um very good move, I think. I mean, Adrian's such a quality player for West Ham and all of a sudden just like that, taking out the team for uh, the wonder kid that was uh, Fabianski, so to speak, and yeah, just never played a single minute again. So quite um 
one of those things really but and also another thing is that Deli Ali is out for a few weeks for Tottenham so uh, I'm sure FPL Boone of course he's here he'll be able to clarify if does that mean then that Mora is a guaranteed starter now for between two to four weeks or does it mean that uh, possibly Lamella comes in who knows if uh, FPL Boone or any Spurs fans brew there and um, being another one uh, could uh, enlighten us regarding that but yeah Alan Ward in chat says Keen, Time is... Keen is untested don't touch him yet uh, I would be inclined mm-hmm. to be cautious with with Moise Keane. He is seven million. is a lot. is a bit of money to be putting in um, on an improvement like Keen, uh, like uh, Steve was talking about earlier on an improvement um, Premier League player. Um, Mora is back in in Guatam's team apparently. Um, so yeah, there's people talking about Mora um, so maybe for for Tottenham. Now I've got Keen. Uh, sorry, I've got uh, Kane in my team. So I've got the Tottenham cover with Kane. Now Mora would be an interesting option if I was to change out Kane and bring in Kevin De Bruyne and switch out a few places in midfield. Maybe Ceballos. I could say goodbye to Ceballos because there's news that Ceballos is slightly injured. Have you heard about this? What? No. Yeah, apparently he's got a slight injury. that He got kicked a little bit hard in the... Uh, the... Oh, Dan mentioned that last night, yeah. Yeah, he got kicked pretty hard, and there's now a doubt that he's going to feature in game week one. So the whole massive risk and punt move on Sabias could actually turn around to be a no-show for me because I might just get rid of him um, and switch out a few players. But we'll we'll save that for later on in the week when we have the uh, the midweek meltdown, I'll call it. Mm, yeah. I was going to just quickly advertise this. If anybody's wanting to come live on the Elite FBL calling tonight... Just get into that Discord waiting room and myself and Jason will get you on discussing all things fantasy football. If you want a Rate My Team, then I suggest you uh, put, put the t- team in the Rate My Team section on the Discord basically now. So it just helps myself and Jason find the particular team that you're um, wanting uh, to basically uh, get rated. Um, about, yeah. And also... Any questions that you have for myself and Jason to answer, we'd be more than happy to take your calls on questions for for us because, like I said, doing rate, I'm going to be honest with you, doing my rate my teams all the time is getting a bit repetitive now. We're seeing the same teams over and over again. There's not much we can add. We are building up to the big kickoff on Friday. There's only four and a bit days to go. On the bottom left of your screen, there's a, a brilliant count. I saw it this morning. A fantastic countdown timer for us all to go into panic mode as they're in the last hour of the game. I'm quite lucky because I go to, I'm at, well, I'm not lucky. I'm at work annoyingly, but I'm actually at work when the game fine. No, when does the game kick off? Eight o'clock, isn't it? The so, yeah, I'll eight, have yeah. one hour. I'll have one hour to um, basically uh, look over everything. But I'm pretty. I don't know about you, Jason, but I, me personally, I'm set on my team now. I'm pretty much happy with what I've got. What, what about yourself? No, he's not. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not set on my team at all, really. Um, I thought I was, but now this Sabios thing, he was my enabler, and obviously now Kane is not. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not so convinced on Kane. I've just got this feeling that. I could probably do with KDB in my team. I see what mm. you guys think in chat, but I think KDB is like, do you know last season he was injured and now he's 9.5 this season. I just think that it's just ridiculous to not have him in your team. It's such a good price. He's absolutely a bargain. And the thing with, the thing with KDB is that he's guaranteed to get, I keep saying this, double-digit assist returns and the high single digits when it comes to goal scored. It's just a case of you've got to be patient with the guy. But if he's got easy fixtures, I think you're going to be um, pretty happy with what um, returns you're going to get because he's going to get you probably double-digit scores versus the likes of Norwich, Sheffield United, Burnley, etc., etc. I mean, I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of a four-five-one formation, but with just Wilson up front, with KDB, Sterling, and Salah, 
featuring in midfield with a few budgets either side. Um, but that, that's that's for me. That's tempting, but it just destroys the rest of your team. Yeah. And that's just again my opinion. But <laughs> I'm going with a. I'm I'm set on a four four two. You're set on a four four two. Yeah, I'm point five out of the perfect team. Let's just put it like that. Point five out, and I'm absolutely gutted. But there's nothing I can do. I'm pretty much um, set on it, to be honest with you. But we've got a million in the waiting room, Jason, and his team's at seventeen forty three. He um he's been there uh, for a bit. Emilian, we'll we'll bring you live on air if you unmute your mic and everything, and we'll happily talk to you. So, Emilian, you're live on Elite FBL calling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All good, good, good. So you, you sent your team in at 17:43 with the uh, the three-five-two formation, yeah? Um, yes. There's, there's there's one name that sticks out straight away for me, and it's Grealish. Yes. What what, what are your thoughts on uh, bringing in well, Grealish? Well, um, same same thing with Wesley. I mean the fixtures, but with Grealish, um, he's played the most minutes out of any Villa player in three season. He's got two goals and two assists, and I think, yeah, I think he's more vital to that Villa attack than um, Wesley is. Well, he's there, he's there, but I, I, my, my basic understanding of Greenish is he's there box to box and everything. And one of the main links between, obviously, the, the, the attacking three that Aston Villa are going to be playing up against. But for the people listening on audio, it's uh, Nick Pope and goal, Van Dijk, Wamba, Saka and Coleman. That looks uh, similar what, 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 defense when did he to post mine. It? Sorry, I got the wrong one. Sorry. 17, 1743. 1743. <clears throat> And then in midfield, it's a five-man midfield of Perez, Salah, Sterling, De Bruyne and Grealish. And then up front, King and Wilson. So rather than having Fraser, you're going with a double strike force of Bournemouth. Yeah, um, I had Fraser, but the balance of my team wasn't, wasn't where I wanted it to be. So I thought King and Wilson will do the job. Mm, yeah, I mean... How we're we're getting we're getting really close to the deadline now. How pretty much set are you with this team? Because to uh, me, it looks pretty solid. 85 percent, maybe ninety. And and um, who are the players that you're a bit wary about? Still Grealish. Um, I mean, besides him, I, I'm pretty happy. Coleman is a bit of a worry just because uh, I heard Everton are in for a new right back, Sadie Bay from Monaco. So that, that's a bit worrying. I don't think I, I think there's more chance of them because they put they've actually had a bid turned down by Watford for Decore. Thirty I think it was thirty two million they've had a bid turned down. I think they're looking for well, what seems to be more centre midfielders, uh, rather than getting in a maybe a, a new centre back. I think their their wing positions are pretty solid. So I don't know about I don't know about the rumour mill on that, but yeah, I mean, what are your quick thoughts on this uh, team, Jason? Oh, I like it. I think it's... It's got the three, hasn't it? It's got the Sterling, De Bruyne, Salah. It's got Wilson, like I said earlier on, but it's got the, it's the three, five, two. Um, you Obviously, you're looking at the four, four, two. See, that's... I think the money was is best invested. Like, that. if you're not happy with Grealish, then you can put that money into into defence um, and yeah. have and have the four, four, two, like what Steve-O said, and just have Perez, Salah, Sterling, De Bruyne. King Wilson, um, and yeah, and just go with that. I mean, that to me is, I mean, it's a solid team. It's a really, really solid team. Um, <clears throat> I like it. Um, just question mark on Grealish, isn't it? Really, it's, um, fixtures after Tottenham is good. Um, the rest of your players are pretty much set for the foreseeable future. Um, they're important to their respective teams, like Steve always says. Um, I think I think you you're almost there with a team. I mean, I would be happy to go into game with, game with one with that team. Um, obviously, Grealish is the only one that has got a bit of a uh, question mark, really. Yeah, he's my one punt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, yeah. Amelia, uh, how long have you been playing this game for? Uh, this is my fourth season, I think. So. Yeah. Right, so you're a bit, you're a bit of a not, not quite a veteran, but you're experienced enough to, to basically answer the, the, our topic tonight, which is uh, 
what what advice do you normally give to people who are like kind of brand new to the game or what, what piece of advice do you give people um well this this one isn't always good but try and avoid hits i mean uh last season i took maybe two hits before christmas time and it worked really wow. well my rain got up to like 20k so wow and then after that, I took a few more hits and then started dropping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to close the window. This is what I've got to put up with every uh, <laughs> sunny day. <laughs> I'll have a corn at it, please. Oh, about the hits? <laughs> um... No, so so yeah, so talk about the um sorry that's that was funny. <laughs> sorry. Um ninety nines all around. <laughs> Absolutely. Get Mr. Whippy says brew in chat. Uh, guys uh, guys in chat are laughing about that. Um that'll be a clip for one of the highlight reels. <laughs> um <laughs> So, so yeah, taking hits, absolutely. I, I took a few hits last season. Uh, one paid off, one backfired. I think hits in moderation are okay, but, yeah, I would say that try to avoid them where possible. Um, there's a lot of people that do it purely because they knee jerk or they're, they're scared or they panic or they're angry about certain players. Like Steve-O said, maybe the player you brought in is underperformed and then you kind of get sick, you take them out again and then, it's always the way, isn't it? Then the next game, they, they get a double digit. So it's one of those where you, you've got to be a bit calculated with any transfers where you're taking a, a minus four because um, obviously you've got points to take into account where what they get next the game week after. So definitely is a good point there. Um, I think there was... A, who was it that took 200-point hit? Um, I can't remember now. Oh, right. Clement, Clement LaRue. Oh. Clement LaRue took a minus a 200-point hit last season. Um, I won't say where he finished, but uh, yeah, it was quite quite something. Um, so yeah, have you got any uh, got any other points that you'd like to discuss with us um, this evening, Emilian? While we've got you here, yeah, one more. Um, I have 0.5 in the bank right now, even with that team. Really? So I was thinking um, after game week two, I might do King to Keen if he hits the ground running, or I can just reinvest that 0.5 into. Uh, my defense, either upgrade Van Dyke or Coleman or one of my bench players. Or Grealish, if, if you guys don't like him. Hmm. Well, it's actually, it goes back to FPL Boomer's point about um, making sure you spend the majority of your money on your starting uh, team. I mean, th- what you've just said um, actually makes complete logical sense to me. I think that maybe hold that 0.5. I mean, your team there i would say is almost the word perfect's a bit strong but it's it's ideal it's, it's a pretty solid um 10 play style team really i really really like that and i think saving 0.5 to potentially upgrade like you just said king to keen or Grealish to somebody or even coleman to dina in the later oh my weeks, god or even... we got a donation well i've got a super chat from brew for two pounds, then uh-huh. go and get yourself an ice cream, Steve-O. <laughs> I don't eat sweet things anymore. I've stopped, so take the two quid back and have one on me instead. I'll give you two quid. <laughs> get a flake 99. I, I, I find it funny, Jason, because I think the uh, the donations are going to stop coming in when the, the mini league, the cash mini league kicks off and uh, people are going to be getting really bitter about how badly we're doing or they're doing or vice whatever the scenarios may be i don't plan on doing badly but yeah (laughs) but no uh, but uh, going back to a median yeah that 0.5 i would i would hold it and i would just it's play people like rico and gibson that i'm looking at that i'm just thinking if you had that 0.5 you could upgrade them to i don't know gibson to that gilbert of aston villa as an example or another 4.5 playing um, defender. So yeah, I maybe I would go Grealish to Pereira, Roberto Pereira. I think he's more of he's a, a defender. Though. No, oh, no, 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 no. The Watford midfielder. Sorry, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. It's just again the first game, the first game in the green game. Uh, sorry, the first game week away at Tottenham. Grealish, I wouldn't expect anything out of. But I like Pereira as a player. He's got a good, he's got a good bit of skill. He's against uh, 
an easy fixture. Well, I'll say an easy fixture. Brighton at home. I think that Watford can get a few goals there. Um, and that's why I'm not going to keep Ryan in goal. Um, so, so yeah, I would probably switch to Roberto Pereira myself um, just just to see how it goes from the start of the season and then risk uh, Grealish. But that's just... I mean, it, it's not going to make a million miles of difference. It's not going to be a game changer changing Grealish out. So maybe just something for you to uh, kind of uh, mull over, really. Breaking. Brighton have signed Neil Mupai from Brentford. <laughs> Yeah, well, he was he, he did really really well last season. The question is whether he be able to. It's the it's the case of will he be able to step mm. up to the Premier League? And I think he's at least twenty two. Um, who who actually knows? To be honest with you, uh, in in the response to Christopher Nesvik, yeah, that's why I've stopped eating sweets. He's he's saying, uh, didn't you eat a whole cake the other day, Steve? Oh, pretty sweet, if you ask me. Yeah, that's why I've just uh, stopped him. <laughs> And of course, Bruce got his um, elite FPL mug waiting at home. He actually took a photo of it, showed me it waiting. He's he's over over in the states at the moment, um, but when he gets home, he's got an elite FPL mug waiting for him. So um, we look forward oh, to oh amazing yeah we look we look forward to him uh, taking a picture of him holding it up and having a nice brew from it. You know, playing on his name, of course. Um, but thank you ever so much for Emilian for joining us and um, just talking a few things about the UFPL team. And I, I, I'm in agreement with Steve. That is a very good looking team. And I'm just thank picking. You. I'm just picking on Grealish. Really, it's no. <laughs> it's um, just maybe Pereira. I think I might, I might really take um, a, take a, a look at that team and see how I feel with um, with some of those picks because it's a very nice team. A three-five-two. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. My, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Emilian. Cheers, dude. Thank you. Nice one, mate. Well, so... uh, we've got Takao, uh, Jason, in the in the waiting room. It, I think his name's Tal Cole. Tal Cole. Tal Cole. Okay, so yeah, bring him in. I'm oh, sorry. That's so right. <laughs> Tal Cole, you're live on the FPL call in with myself and Steve. Welcome to the uh, the show. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Have you posted your team recently in the RMT channel? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm the yeah, last I, on that. I see it. Oh, Sabellus is injured. Oh, Sabellus. Sub- he, he's, he's got a slight <laughs> injury concern, yeah. Oh, I thought there was oh. some official news, like he's out for like two weeks or something. The way, <laughs> the way you know. um, but, but before we get to your team, um, uh, how long have you been playing the game for? Uh, Two uh, like when it came out for this. This is the first season. Wow. Okay. So I'll ask you then. What's been the best advice anybody's given to you on how to play this game? Um, from the from the Discord. Well, just in general, it doesn't have to be from Discord. Uh, basically, to spread your money out. I guess I not. I didn't get really. Actually, like, okay, yeah, I have to, but I have a bunch of tips that I, I take in consideration. Is is there any any specifically that you can think of where you're like, do you know what, that individual has given me sound advice and I've stuck with that? Uh, not really. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> well, nice and what? honest, nice and honest, tell Carl. I like it. So, so his team is who, Jason? Where where did he right. post it? So he's got. Matt Ryan in goal. Uh, he's got uh, Robertson, Van Dyke, Zinchenko, Wambasaka as his back four. Uh, he's got Sabios, the enabler, who's now uh, an injury concern. Perez, Salah, Sterling, De Bruyne. So a power, a power three with Perez. One second, my my, uh, my camera's shut down. Um, and up front, he's got Wilson. Wow, it's uh, very, very, very as I expect a. Eh? kind of templateish team and everything um since the community shield yesterday you're not concerned about the double livable defense or have you not fallen into that trap and you're pretty happy with uh sticking with uh double livable so basically i joined uh just to maybe i i want to switch around the double liverpool defense uh meaning what specifically I think I want to switch maybe Robertson or Van Dyke to maybe Coleman or uh, 
or maybe yeah someone like that and then maybe upgrade the bios or i came here for help yeah i mean i think that uh your plan of downgrading a Liverpool player might work for the simple fact that it's probably better. I don't know about you, Jason, but in in my opinion, that to start the season anyway, it's better to spread your money across the defence rather than loading up on a, a double of said team or even a triple in some people's cases. I, I got one. Of, that's basically a tip that I got from here from the Discord. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I I think it's one of the more um, advisable tips to have because you just don't know how the season for the first three or four game weeks is going to open up. For all you for all you know, Liverpool can concede one goal per game. Um, they may not be as defensively solid as last year. I just think that they the, are. I just think that the the picks of TAA and Robertson. I mean, they're not like any. They're not like a typical Premier League team. I mean, a lot. A lot of goals and assists came through the those two last season. I think the way yeah. that Liverpool set up, you kind of look at a TAA and, and a Robertson pick, Not you don't really have it as a normal defender pick. Like I see them as, in a weird way, more midfield sort of orientated for the, with, the, with the attacking potential that they have. Um, Van Dijk is a massive threat um, in the box as well. He's, he's a bonus point magnet. Um, he does attract bonus points, and I think that you know doubling up on Van Dyke and either TAA or Robertson is not necessarily a bad idea. It was it was the common theme that we saw at the beginning of the preseason, and I think these people got a bit scared because of the result against Napoli and I, and obviously the Community Shield. But I I do still think that um, there is a lot of points to be gained on either one or two um, or doubling up on the two. The, just because of the price point of Van Dijk, I think he's an absolute bargain. And yeah. I mean, this this four five one Jason, is basically what you just said. Um, but instead of having Wilson, it's Kane, uh, really. But if you were to have Kane in this team, it would just decimate your, um, your yeah. squad's full stop. Yeah, it would. You're losing £3 yeah. million. It's just, yeah, exactly. Um, and that's the problem. And I think that when I look at the players of Salah, Sterling and De Bruyne's calibre, I feel that owning Kane is unnecess- an, a, an unnecessary um, thing to do, really. I think that there's so much money that would be tied up in those four players that, like you said, it's completely shoestring budget for the rest of the team. And I think... You know, we'd like to have these players in our team, but ultimately you've got to be clever and sensible with the rest of your picks. Because if Kane blanks, then you've you've kind of ruined mm. you've ruined your team for the rest of the game week. Mm. So, so yeah. Ta- Tao Cal, just uh, one final question. You're a you're a Liverpool fan. Uh, what do you think of the game on Friday? How do you think it's going to go? Uh, it's it's. I'm pretty sure it's going to go uh, well. I'm I'm really scared about uh, Arnold, and I think Gomez is in really good form, and he could come in and replace him at any minute. So I'm going with Robertson. Do you not think that uh, Gomez it could start at centre back alongside Van Dijk? Uh, yes. and actually... mm. But also, he it could happen. What happened in the Community Shield where Matip came in centre back and Gomez came in right back. Right. Okay. But 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 how do you think the actual game is going to go? Do you think Liverpool are going to win really comfortably? Do you think it's going to be a tight affair? What what are your thoughts on the actual outcome of the game itself? I think it will be like a three 0 something like that. Wow. So you're confident then in that clean sheet? Yeah. Excellent. Brilliant. And uh, just one one. I said final question, but what is the likelihood of this being your your game week one team come eight o'clock on Friday evening? Uh, the only players that I might change from this team is maybe one Liverpool defender and Ceballos. Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably um, a very very wise thing to to do. To be honest, based on even Jason's comments that Ceballos looks like he could be injured, so it, it's looking it's looking a possibility. And also to answer Hicks seventy six in chat. Um, the latest from Emery was saying that he's hopeful that Lacazette will be able to feature for the Newcastle game. The doctors, in inverted commas, are optimistic and we're going to wait. If he's okay for Sunday, perfect. He's not, 
if he's not then it'll be the next match so it doesn't give us a lot of a lot of information but it's 50 50 but i think i i think he's more likely to start actually i think it's more 60 40. <laughs> Uh, Tao Cow, thank you for joining us live on the Elite FPL calling, my friend. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. dude. Uh, Yash, we are going to bring you live on air in, in about two seconds because Jason, uh, 2002, this team is uh, got very, it. very different in team. I've got it. Yash, welcome to the Elite FPL calling, my friend. Hello, what's up? All good, all good. Uh, Mate, this is um, very, very different to what we, we're normally used to seeing here. I, li I like it a lot. So people listening on audio, we got Pope in goal. We're probably going to go with this 4-4-2. Four, four, in fact, you know what, Yash? You tell the audience because I can't work out what kind of formation you're going to be playing a game with one. this. Yeah, what's your game all? with yeah. one formation, Yash? Uh, it would be 4-4-2, four, four, I reckon. Or just give me a minute, please. Yeah, so for people listening in audio, it's Poping, Pope, Dunk, Coleman, Robertson, Wambasaka, Zinchenko, Fraser, Sterling, Salah, Lucas, Mora, Dendonka, Wilson, Wesley, and Origi. So, yeah, so, so, so the whole thing about having money on the bench is is definitely a thing here. So you're gonna yeah. be going, so who are you going to pick out of Origi and Wesley to play game week one then, Yash? Origi, because he he has a relatively easier fixture, I reckon. Because yeah. Wesley is up against Tottenham. So in game week two, if uh, Mane comes in and Urigi does not get uh, time, so Wesley could easily replace him because Wesley then in game week two has a, an easier fix fixture. Yeah, okay. It's an interesting one. We don't normally see people with stacks of their bench with so well, with the money in the bench. Obviously, you've put um, interesting lineups. Um, really, it's 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 different i think that um you've gone obviously no city attack well so you've got sorry ignore me you've got sterling um but you've got yeah, um sure. you've got some of the big picks you've got um you've interestingly gone with double bournemouth and fraser and wilson which we like you've gone with the rigi which has not been not been seen much in um in the fpl community in terms of calling shows that we've had um and wesley as well so you've got the, those three those three that to, you know, those two to choose from and those three up front which you can interchange and i see i don't know about you but steve-o but i'd just like to have players on the bench that just don't i don't have to worry about <laughs> and yeah, that's how i that's how i play fpl i don't want to have to have a headache each week because wesley's on the bench and he's got 12 oh yeah he's got i know he's got you know, 12 or 16 points or something like that and it's just yeah this yeah, I, I agree. The strategy that I'm using this year is to, even though I've completely uh, going against of my advice, which is basically make sure that you have playing players on your bench. I, I just don't want to have what I had last season, where I had points just sitting there yeah. while my main my main player on the the eleven just did nothing. And I think it's just the it's just getting rid of that headache of not having to like it's the rotating keeper argument, isn't it? It's if I go with Pope and Heaton, uh, one of them bound to keep a clean sheet and it's always going to be the one that's left on the bench. So I'd rather just stick with an 11 and uh, happily not worry about my bench per se. I completely agree with that. It's the first time I've done it actually as well. And I'm a bit, that's probably why I'm going into a bit of a panic about my team because I just look at the bench and I'm just thinking, don't worry about it, steve <laughs> The players that you've bought for your 11 are all... Guaranteed I mean, but starts. if you've got a Dendonka pick on the bench, I mean, he's going to play. He's going to get minutes. Yes. He's not going to. He's not going to set the world on fire. But you're going to get, you know, like the two points, the three points. You know, it's just going to be a back. Uh, a, just yeah, it's just having those playing. Like last season for me, you know, I I had the Wambasaka, um, and I had the Bennett pick, and it was they were playing for their respective teams, and it was kind of like it just takes the pressure off knowing that there's they're not costing you a lot of money but they've they can trickle the points in just in case one of your main players doesn't play mm -hmm. i think that having the headache like you had last season swapping out players rotating this is the reason like i said like you saying about keepers i just don't like doing it because you're putting in you're putting an added element of like you're putting 
you put in an added element of um what's the word i'm after steve-o pressure um, pressure yeah yeah uh, it's just like it's you've got enough pressure anyway in the game but yeah having to make the decision to pick that 11 out of out of uh out of your subs as well yeah i, I don't like it i don't like that yeah. myself yash what um what advice have you been given or do you like to give complete brand new players to the game um when 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 speaking to people uh, for this season for for any 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 season well, specifically for this season, please do not buy Arnold because I I think he will be replaced by Gomez for sure. Not not, not against the uh, the bottom of the table teams like for Norwich, I think he's good to go. But uh, for the difficult fixtures, even Arsenal, I think he will be replaced by Gomez because even in the Community Shield, when Gomez came in instead of uh, Arnold, they were much more stable. I reckon because Martip and Van Dijk, they obviously partnered and scored for Liverpool. They equalised for Liverpool. And with Gomez at the back, uh, the midfielders and uh, even the attackers, they play much more freely. You're obviously a, a regular user of this Discord. I've noticed your name a lot. How, how are you enjoying using it? Yeah. Hello, you just cut out. I'm sorry, hello. I was I was just saying you're obviously a, a regular user of the Discord. How how are you enjoying using it? Yeah, it, it has been pretty fun. It has got me excited for this season mm. because uh, last time I had a pretty pretty bad season. I I was doing pretty good uh, in the beginning, but once the season ended, I dropped so much. I just cannot tell you. But now all this Discord has got me really pumped up for the coming season. Can you? Uh... Can you remember back to last season as to like why you felt you dropped? So I mean, where did you like? Where did you kind of? What was your peak? And then where did you drop down to? And what do you put it down? And what do you put it down to? Well, uh, more than half of the year, more than half of the season, I was in about top five thousand. Wow. But then, yeah, but I, to be honest, I'm not afraid to take hits, and that that's what I did last season, and that just got me so much down in the table. Wow. Where, where did you actually end up in the end? Well, probably around in 100 or 120,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a yeah. hell of a... I mean, how many points hits were you taking? I don't even remember. It was about like 8 to 10, 8 to 12, I think. Between I did it for consecutively 6, six to 7 game weeks. I took... Uh, I took about 10 to 12, uh, 10 to, uh, 12 to 14 hits every game week. <laughs> for about six, seven, yeah. What, so, why, why were you doing it though? What was the reason behind it? Because initially it was working for me. I had consecutive game weeks in which uh, instead of taking eight, eight, eight point hits, I was doing pretty good in the mini league. I was doing better than average. But then it just stopped working for me, I guess. Mm. It's, your luck's gonna run out eventually isn't it let's be honest yeah, um yeah, yeah it's it's in for you <laughs> well yeah. well no i i did have i i cancelled out didn't it the minus 16 did well but the minus 20 didn't so it kind of kind of almost cancelled out but um but yeah um let's not talk about that <laughs> this season will be different i'll be a bit more careful um it depends i don't think we're gonna get a repeat of last season i don't think again for for well ever again to be honest with you but um yash um is there any one final point you want to make before we uh we get your fair uh, uh i just had a doubt what do you reckon if i should uh try bringing in the boyna and maybe downgrade both fraser and lucas mora what do bring, you think bring in De Bruyne and then downgrade fraser and lucas mora oh uh, it's, it's basically a question of do you get rid of a punt player and one of the most consistent point scorers versus basically one pre let's be honest he's a premium midfielder hmm. uh, god i would i would stick to what you've got for now i think i think stick to what yeah. you've got and uh, there's a lot of interference based on a lot of interference on Yasser's uh, mic at the moment. Um, 
don't know if you guys can hear it but um yeah i would i would say with what you've got i would yeah I'd stick with it it's the same as steve o really the, the way you spread your money out is kind of suited very well with lucas moore and fraser in that midfield um i think if if i was going to get kdb in that team it would be taking money out of the attack and having um having a non a non playing or even just mason Green, greenwood and freeing up that million there um and just getting getting those that that money in elsewhere really um maybe maybe even dropping robertson down to van dyke uh is another option but it's yeah it's a bit of a hard one really i don't know if if i would do that move i think um i think you set your team up the, to kind of not have not have an extra premium to go next to sterling and salah but yeah, thank you, a... thank you for coming on, Josh. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thank you for uh, Jason. As you always say, what are the guys speaking about in chat? What are they saying? What are they talking about? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we've got uh... Let's go back, back, back to the old days of uh, speaking to people in chat. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, um, we're talking about the guys on talking about Discord about the Cash League. The Cash League is over sixty players now registered to, into it. Wow. Um, we're not we're not going to actively advertise the cash league but if you want to find out more about it the information is in discord um we've got people talking about uh, sigurdsson still a good pick to have um yeah yeah i still think he's a good pick to have steve so well interestingly enough he is quite literally a toss-up but if i'll ask the chat now do I have Kevin De Bruyne or Sigurdsson? But if I have Sigurdsson, it means that I could upgrade somewhere else in my team. That that is my that is genuinely my dilemma for my team. It's just a case of Kevin De Bruyne and Sigurdsson. Which one to own? I personally prefer Kevin De Bruyne because he just plays for Man City. That that is as simple as it gets. And it seems that <sighs> Sigurdsson will get you a lot of goals, but minimum. Not many assists, whereas De Bruyne will get you that just huge amount of assists and uh, a small amount of goals. I'd I'd rather go with Kevin De Bruyne, um, to be honest with you. <clears throat> oh blimey, there's a lot of Kevin De Bruyne votes cool pouring in right now. So it looks like I'm sticking with Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, I, I would have thought. Um, I think that's a flaming good uh, good move here. Who is this? Uh, Shaban's been saying about this a lot. This. Saint Maximum Mim, Saint Saint Maximin. I, 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 I'll be honest, I don't know who he is. Uh, I could find out who who is he, Jason? Do we know? Um, yeah, you... yeah. If you go on Google, we'll find. <laughs> <laughs> uh... New Newcastle winger, apparently. Yeah. Well, sent warning. I mean, Saint Maxim sent warning by Newcastle United head coach Steve Bruce. Um, optimism um, for Newcastle, um, Saint Maxim. I don't know. Um, this is a, this is a 22 year old French player that's been signed for Newcastle United. He's a winger, and um, that's all I know. Um, he got in La Liga last. Sorry, sorry, La Liga, League One. Sorry, like he's French. It's League One last season. He took part in 34 matches, scored six goals, three assists. Um, <laughs> Don't I don't really know much about him to be fair. I haven't seen anything well, about him. Mars Bar has come in with uh, <laughs> was it the pre with that name. Was it the pre season was it the pre season match against St Etienne and plays as our number ten as the second striker, he will play every minute. Well there we are. There we are, you see. Uh, interestingly, Cameron Rawcliffe saying there are so many live streams right now. Yeah, but the difference is, is that we're taking callers. And if you want to come live on air right now, get into that Discord and chat all things fantasy football. If you want to get a rate my team going, we'll be more than happy to bring your team up on screen and you can discuss your team right now. In fact, straight away, Andy, 1998, all the way from Ireland, has uh, gone straight in there. And we will bring you live on air right now. Andy! Joining us from Ireland, you're live on Elite FPL calling, my friend. Hey, Stephen, how are you? I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm. Have you uh, posted your rate my team at all? Yeah, yes, yeah, so I've got it up here. Oh, fair enough. Um, got... Before, yeah, sorry, Steve, go ahead. I was going to say before we get to it, um, Andy 
We want to know advice that you would give to any newbies, amateurs to this specific game. Um, what what key tips would you give them to uh, to basically to stop them from having a bad season, so to speak? Uh, focus on fixtures. Have Salon Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a Liverpool defender. You know, the basic. Has there anything been in the, in, in the Discord community, uh, advice-wise, that you've received where, like I said to a medium, where it's like, you know what, I'm going to take it down board and you've stuck with that advice? Uh, it's probably to stick with one formation uh, for as long as you can uh, to reduce transfers. Uh, I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at your team now. It's all the formations, and it's something Jason's kind of looking at right now, really, which is a four-five-one formation for people listening audio. It's Tom Heaton in goal, Van Dyke, Zinchenko, Walker, Peters, Coleman, a five-man midfield of what you've just mentioned: Sterling, Fraser, Salah, De Bruyne, Perez, and then up front on his own, Wilson. Uh, give it to us, Andy. What, what are your what are your thoughts straight away on you choosing this four-five-one formation, and what are your concerns about it? If any, uh, I don't really have any concerns. My only concern would be De Bruyne. Uh, really? Yeah. Really? Why? Because well, Everton, Everton are gonna sign Zaha, and so I'm. Are they? Apparently, <laughs> apparently it was the in chat. The man in the know. Yeah, apparently it was in chat. Uh, right, okay. And I just think maybe Sigurdsson might be the, the the best option. Well, I have to wait and see because they've got they've got really good fixtures. See, I I I wow! I just look at that team and I'm just I just think it's brilliant. Um, I really do. Um, in fact, well, thank, that's that's not you. that's not going to be that far off what my team is going to look like. To be honest with you, I was talking about the four yeah. five one Will Wilson up front earlier on in the stream. And my team's going to look very, very similar. If not, very, yeah, it's going to be very, 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 very similar to that. I, I, I can imagine. Come game yeah, one, Chapman saying the same. It's such a good. <laughs> that's a good, good, good team. Um, obviously Walker, Pe- Walker Peters, um, may have to be changed out. Um, purely because, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's looking at Aurier's coming back in training. He had a, obviously a hand operation. Um, some some Spurs fans would prefer Aurier. Um, I think Aurier is probably ahead ahead of uh, Walker Peters in um, in in line to play. So, so yeah, that that Walker Peters may be good game week one, but going forward, you might want to switch him out. Obviously, some yeah. people have gone with Holabas, some people have gone with Zuma as a, as, a, as an option. Some people have gone with Ake. I mentioned him as well. As they're, they're just some of the options that you can consider. Um, but that midfield is absolutely sublime. Sterling, Fraser, Salah, De Bruyne, Perez. Just brilliant, that is. Absolutely brilliant. Will Wilson up front. Uh, that is a great team. It's, it, that is a great team. It's the classic. They're all key to the team that they play for. And unless barring injury, uh, these play. I mean, saying that out loud, I think Wilson potentially could be a rotation risk with the amount of flaming strikers that Bournemouth have got. But he's an England international. He's a proven quality. Premier League player, so I'd like to think that Wilson is probably the most uh, safest of all the strikers for Bournemouth. Um, there is a bit of concern, like you just said, that if one of those players doesn't start, I'm looking at Walker Peters specifically, there's no one coming off the bench really that's probably no. going to play. Like I said, Wickham, oh, no, he ain't going to play for Crystal Palace. Greenwood, again, unlikely to be doing much for United. And this Lundstrom, which I've read is not going to be starting for Sheffield United. Well, yeah, he started pre-season, but his pre-season last year, I think he made about three or four appearances and he looked terrible, apparently. So he's another one to be wary of. But other than that, yeah, I, I, I like the Tom Heaton pick. Uh, is that because of his uh, pre-track record with Bernie and also the fact that Aston Villa have got really good fixtures? Yeah, I had a I had a look at Henderson and Heaton and... You can kind of just see that that uh, Heaton knows what he's doing. Uh, so to mm. I think I think Henderson's first season will be more of a, a learning experience rather than 
uh, someone you'd want in your team all year. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, Block, FPL, yeah. Block FPL in chat is just saying about he's going to be missing out on the TAA and Robertson, Robertson assists. Um, yeah, there is that. Um, <laughs> there is that, but you can't have everything. I mean, you're going to make up with no. just just because of that midfield, that, that strike, that 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 four, that, sorry, that five man midfield and Wilson in front, just that that could be an absolute gem start of the season. They've got good fixtures. All of the all those players have got good fixtures. They're all proven players in the Premier League, like we've been talking about, and you've got. You've got the Trinity, the Holy Trinity of Sterling, Salah, De Bruyne, and that I, I'm predicting that the Trinity of Salah, Sterling, De Bruyne will be will be the, the new. Um, well, last year it was um, Alonso, Mendy, and uh, Robertson, wasn't it? So now I think it could be definitely Sterling, Salah, De Bruyne. I think it could be the year of midfielders instead of the uh, year of defenders. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh... I have some interesting stats about the top 1,000 players owning certain players, if that makes sense. You carry sense. on. You carry yeah. on. This is interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the world is your oyster. Okay. Uh, Coleman's owned by 3.9% of the total players. Uh, but within the top 1,000 players uh, is... I... Yeah, go on. What do you mean by the top 1,000 players? So the, the the current top one thousand players. Well, as in like, the, as in like the ones season, from last the season. Yeah. Where, well, where how, have how you pulled you... that? Yeah. Where have you pulled that data from? Because that data is not available <laughs> because the game's not gone live yet. Well, it's it's here. I uh, it's <laughs> it's okay to plug a a fantasy football. Uh, opponent, yeah, yeah. I by suppose. all means. By all, I mean, I mean, no. I'm I'm genuinely Fant- intrigued. Yeah, uh, fantasyfootballfix.com. Yes. And they've. Uh, okay. And they give you your value, form fixtures, yeah. projected, and then percentage owned. Okay. Uh, it says left, they... left is overall ownership, and right is top 1,000. And right, okay. I, and well, I have okay. both on either side, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, this is. Yeah, this so is Col- fascinating information here, Andy. So please, you carry on. Uh, so Coleman is three point nine percent owned total, and then the uh, in the top one thousand, eighteen point nine percent own Coleman. Right. Okay. Uh, Perez only owned by thirteen point four percent of uh, total players, and in the top one thousand. Thirty-nine point six percent owned. If you just, I, if, I think, if you just, is this? I, I just do you still, want me to screenshot it? No, no, no. I believe, I believe what you're saying. I'm just curious. Yeah, no. how, how they're getting that that those those figures because the, even the API that is going from the, the, the sorry the the fantasy football API surely there's no there's no there's no live game week at the moment. So I'm really I'm just curious. Has has the is that not finishing data from last year? That's what I'm have... thinking. This is finishing data yes. from last year. I don't think it's current data. You think it's finishing data? I do, yeah, because it's we're not like the game isn't live yet, so the game's not. There's no game week. There's no game week statistics at the moment. All the statistics but do you are think, on. Do you think they would have been able to identify the top thousand players from last year and then track their? selection the only way that they would be able to track their selections is if the top 1000 players all signed up for fantasy football fix and they then entered their players in and they pulled the data that way i just i don't know of a way of them being able to get that information at this stage um so i'm thinking that i'm inclined to agree with some of the people in chat saying i think it's finishing data from last year but that's just my opinion of course i don't know how they pull their data so i couldn't comment for uh, fantasy football fix, um, but I just think that uh, I think it's last year's data myself. But interesting data yeah. nonetheless. Still interesting data. Uh, yeah, Bruno thinks it's possible, but you're the tech guy, so maybe I should. I, should... I know. I, <laughs> I should trust you. When it when it comes no, when it comes to that, I, I I don't know how they pull the information, so I I, I don't want to comment on it. So I'm just I'm what? just guessing. Well, what's okay? But surely the overall uh, ownership. What what are the, uh, the what are the popular picks then, Andy? Uh, overall, 
from the overall well, I game. only, you see, I only, oh, for that, uh, you see, I only get the information on the players I've selected. Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, your your team is pretty within reason template. A lot of the players most people have. So, for example, how many people own Salah? It's about thirty seven percent, isn't it? Yeah, and in the top one thousand, it says ninety one point three percent. Yeah, that's from last year. It's it's it's. it's easily from last year that information there but i mean what about like say someone like uh walker peters how many of the overall game right now in walker peters because he uh, could be a major 7.8 percent in the top one oh, really yeah wow okay and heaton, wow. heaton is owned by six percent at the moment and 16.2 percent own him in the top 1000 oh, wow yeah i think so that has to be yeah. current i think well i could be wrong uh, Zinchenko, 7.8% in the total. And then for top 1,000, 44.9%. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So these, these uh, I just want to make it clear to everybody in chat that, that I don't know where these figures have been pulled from. Um, so don't take them as, you know, 100%. Uh, I mean, it's if you want to go on to Fantasy Football Fix and get the information... Just be just be mindful about where that information has been pulled from, and I don't know if on the on on the website it's does it actually say current ownership or does it say last season's finishing ownership or anything like that? Because uh, yeah, all it gives me is left is overall ownership and right is top one thousand. Okay, okay, okay. For, so I I can only take it as as current. Okay, but so it could be previous. Okay, well, thank you for that. And um, a few people are saying that it is current stats. Um, so, so maybe I don't know if there's an API that's being pulled that's showing transfers in of players um, that may you be, you'd be able to get those statistics from. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm just guessing. I t- I'll tell you what, though, I'd find it really, really fascinating. I mean, in Block FPL makes a point here. It, it, it matters but it shouldn't really impact our decisions which is true but it's it is really really fascinating to yeah, um it's kind of nice to know that you're going in the right direction so to speak yeah yeah i agree i that's why i enjoy looking at these statistics because it's one of those where you know i don't know let's just say for instance for argument's sake the, the guy that won it last year just to see where his team is for example uh block fpl in chat right now he ended 50th in the world it's fascinating watching who his team he is going to be selecting because people like me are going to be looking at this thinking uh, he's going to pick Pereira which I believe he has picked for his team and I'm going to be going <laughs> to absolute meltdown mode so why haven't picked Pereira because block FPL finished 50th again the good thing about this game is that last season doesn't matter doesn't matter no. anymore most players who do you know relatively well each season um, you know, maybe, you know, look at look at what they're doing. But the odd, I mean, Jason will happily admit right now, last season was a complete anomaly. He ended in the top two thousand in the world. I think it was like, top fifteen hundred. So top fifteen hundred. One thousand three hundred and seventy, I think. Something like. And and his average ranking of seven seasons, or whatever it's been, is about one million. <laughs> no, so <it's> whereas, <laughs> so whereas. Someone like me, my average ranking is, a, is roughly about 50,000, 70,000 each season. Um, yeah. So oh, it's always I have, worth... I have one that might prove that it's current. Greenwood. No, I'm look, I've am i just been given a link. Um, Chaban in chat is actually... Um, oh, okay. So, so current highest owned player selection. Players with current highest ownership within Fantasy Premier League updated every hour, which is, suggests that they are getting live information from the, uh, the Fantasy Football... API that's giving them the information. Say again. And he's got his back. He's back. Bring him yeah, back. Yeah. So, so basically, that would suggest that they're getting it every hour, which is current. So there we go. Something I didn't even know about. So, so apparently, um, they've got they've got the stats. So, so Andy. <laughs> Yeah, extraordinary, fasc- fascinating um, the, the, the conversation there. I found this really, really interesting. Take it away, my friend, your team, and just tell us just the top 1,000 selected okay. by just of your players alone. So let's go, starting from the top, Tom Heaton, how many in the top 1,000? Let's go for your team. Uh, 16.2% in the top 1,000. 
own heaton. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, fifty-two percent, fifty-two point six percent Van Dyke. Uh, Zinchenko's forty-four point nine. That low. Okay. Forty-four point nine. Yeah. Uh, Walker Peters seven point eight. Uh, Coleman eighteen point nine. Sterling seventy-one point two. <laughs> Fraser thirty-four point seven. Thirty-four percent. Yes, 34%. Wow, okay. On Croatia. Uh, Salah, 91%. Good. De Bruyne, 20%. Wow. Uh, Perez, 39%. Uh, Wilson, 40 Wow, that's really, really interesting. That's genuinely yeah. a very interesting... Um... I was expecting more higher ownership than, uh, than De Bruyne. Was it, was it 21%? 20, yeah, 20. point six. yeah. I tell that's what, that's what has that's what has me a little worried. <laughs> well, I would you know, be again. But... It, it's like Block FPL said. It's you can take these figures with a pinch of salt. If you know your, let's be honest here. If you know your football and everything, you know what De Bruyne can bring to the table. And I wouldn't be. Yeah, don't get me wrong. De Bruyne, unfortunately, is one of those players where you have to give him time. He's like Hazard. You have to own him for the whole season because he's going to get you across the whole season 200 plus points. It's just that you're going to have to put up with those blanks and he could blank the first three games of this season and he is going to be wait and keep patient. But unfortunately, us FPL managers, we can't keep patient and we're probably going to sell him after game week three and then he'll go and flame and get a hat-trick versus whoever. Gee whiz in chat's calling me a casual because I didn't know about the live stats. But I, I genuinely didn't. And I, I guess it's behind... No, I didn't I, either. I, is it, I only just found mind, it maybe a you, day ago. If you don't mind me asking, are you a, a paid member of the site? Yeah. So all those yeah. stats, all those stats are behind a paid It's wall. a paid wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there you yeah. go. I'm not... I, I've never... I've never paid for any any uh, websites like that. So there, were, there you go. I, I, that's why I don't know about it. But um, they may be... Yeah, no, that's, that's all right. I mean... That's fair you enough. Don't have to. That's good. Yeah, good. No, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, may help some somebody in chat that doesn't know about that. It may help them now. So thank you for sharing it. Um, Mars Bar play says that De Bruyne plays too deep. Ah, oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't play too deep. He he is such a talisman for for Man City. I think that I I'm, I don't care if he's only owned by twenty point six of the top one thousand managers. He's 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 too good to ignore for me. Um, still a casual okay fine um, I, I take it I take that <laughs> uh, I think we need to get Vince Chapman into uh, in, in, in onto the show absolutely Th- okay so bring him in oh me <laughs> yeah yeah I said bring him in well, I'm looking for his team has he posted it lately uh, Vince Chapman, you're alive on the Elite FPL calling, my friend. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, guys? Congratulations on all the subs and thank newbies. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I want to ask you this, Vince. I mean, as a very, very long-term viewer of this show, did you ever think would ever come to this? Or are you just blown away by what's going on? I would have to say a bit of both, really. <clears throat> Blown away because the last time I think I called in, you've now like 100% doubled the su- subscribers. Oh, wow. So we were down at what? Say 600 ish, were we? Or something. Was it? Oh, when you. I, I was no, I mean when the summer cool started. Or was when it you six... first ever started, yeah. Yeah. We would have been so really. I just mean Recently, in the last two months, it's gone up a hundred percent at least. Oh yeah, we, we've we've uh, it's it's absolutely mad. Uh, our uh, our subscriptions and everything has just gone for the roof. It's down to people like you, Vince, spreading the well, word and helping the elite FBL com- community grow. Yeah, and grow the community is great. I mean, uh, I just go on there for all my information now, so that's where well, I get all my all my news, all my transfer gossip, everything that's going on. It's just Discord now. That, that links us beautifully into the hot topic this evening, which is about tips for newbies and amateurs and everything. I mean, what tips would you give to people that have never played this game before? Well, I would cons- consider myself a newbie as well. 
It's my oh, okay. third proper season, yeah. maybe fourth. <laughs> so, but is there any, anything well, you've learnt over these three seasons where it's like, actually, I'm going to stick to this because it seems to have worked in the past? Well, I've got no uh, like history to base it on myself, but I would say less hits is crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, I take too many hits. Uh, also, this year I'm looking at quality over unknown factors and information overload. Can, so okay. I'm just. Can you elaborate on what you mean by unknown factors? Are you referring to people like Wesley and Sabellos as an example? Yeah, Wesley, players coming in, maybe Frank Lampard's system, Man United defenders getting used to playing together. All these are unknown factors. So I wouldn't uh, put them in my team game week one and you've just mentioned the discord and everything can you just uh, tell our audience as a, a very long-term serving member of this community your thoughts and uh, well jason creating this discord and obviously people like fpl boona daily llama squeaky bum time i mean even uh, squeaky bum time <laughs> brett mollison um <laughs> and of course yourself that are in this day in day out can you just tell anybody that's brand new to the show what they're missing out on and what are the benefits of using the Discord? Well, it's multifaceted. You've got everything. What I like to do is wake up in the morning, turn on Discord and get all my information and catch up from the, the nights before, uh, transfer news, gossip between the regions, because it's a lot of people from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa uh, coming on at different times. You could talk to in the middle of the night if you've got transfer issues or headache problems. People who share the same opinions, different opinions, and you just want to meet new people. I mean, it's interactive, so you can do everything on it. Uh, I can't express enough how, how great it is. Can we, uh, we'll keep you on air for a few minutes because uh, we've got Richard S. waiting in the waiting room. It'd be nice to hear your thoughts on his team. It's at 2047, Jason. Uh, Richard S., we're going to bring you live on uh, Elite FBL calling with myself, Jason, and uh, well, a bit of a special guest host in Vince Chapman. We haven't had Vince on for a very. I think you've only phoned up the show once, haven't you, Vince? Yeah, well, that was the point. I was trying to hide my team, and three weeks I had the same team, and everyone shared my team. So I thought I'd better just call in. <laughs> what are you thinking of this uh, calling um, aspect oh, of, of the show? Oh, it's incredible. Uh, it, it's like uh, connecting. Well, you get to talk to the host, which is something that other channels don't really offer. Uh, you get to discuss your the main things that are in your head, uh, troubling you the whole week that maybe you wouldn't be able to share on such a spectrum uh, and interact with such great people. Boone has been an amazing uh, person to talk to for me personally, Lama, all the guys on your channel. You get to meet get to meet some amazing people in this community that you know just we you wouldn't necessarily meet if you didn't have you know the interact interaction that you we have. I mean, I just want to say thank you ever so much. Oh my god, I can't, we've got a super chat from Hammersy, Hammersai, I should say, Hammersai oh, wow. with the five five. Well, five dollar super chat. Thank you ever so much for that. Um, that's much that's appreciated. That's awesome. Thank you. Your, Thank you very much. Your support is much appreciated and it all goes back into the stream and improving the uh, the podcast. And who knows, we may even have a, a prize draw for you guys um, at some point during the season as well. We've got, obviously, we've got the Cash League, which is taking um, taking us by a bit of surprise. We had, we've got more people than we expected in that. And we've also got the Tap Tap Sport game. And I just want to just actually, while I'm on the subject, if you don't know about Tap Tap Sport, it's it's not a paid ad. This is nothing. We're not getting anything from this. This is just a partner company that is offered to to run a, a a prize for you guys, the elite FPL community, on their website. If you sign up with the code that is in the description, you sign up. The Premier League fixtures are now actually released. Um, later on this week, we'll be going through the predictions of the, what the, we think the games are going to be. Um, so again taptapsport.co.uk sign up with a unique code in the description it's not a paid ad we're not getting a single bit of money from tap tap sport this is just a partnership we've got with them and we're just inviting you guys to take part in the game using our code 
and mm-hmm. get get a hundred pound prize draw for the person who and gets just, the most correct predictions at the end of the week. Yeah, and just well, to add, sorry. it is the easiest thing to sign up to possible. I I'm as everybody knows, I'm not great with tech. In fact, I get so annoyed with tech, I basically just avoid it like the plague. And I I wanted to obviously do this um, particular predictor game and you know what it's so so easy to do i logged in it took about five minutes and it was done so you could just uh much like jason said really there's a chance of you uh earning a few pennies as they say but uh Absolutely. yeah let, let's get richard s on let's and i'll I, and i will do it this time jason oh uh, richard s you are going to be live on elite fpl calling right now my friend so all you have to do is unmute your mic and we can all talk your uh fpl team Ari Hiroki, it's not just for UK people either. It's worldwide, it's fine. You can sign up. Welcome, Richard S. You just need to unmute your mic, my friend. We've got your team up on the on air now, on screen. And Richard. Can you hear us? There he is, there he is. There he is, there he is. Yes, yes. I've got I've just, I've just in, as well. in as well. Oh, you need, need to turn chat. down the stream, down Richard. The stream, Richard. No, I think it's his no, speakers. I think it's his speakers. You turn your speakers you turn down, speakers Richard. Down, Richard. The, the, the perils, the perils of lying. Lying. Yeah, sorry, oh, yeah, sorry, Richard. sorry, Richard. We're hearing we're hearing an echo. You've obviously got us playing through a speaker or something there. Um, that's a shame. We ran um, out to space then. We ran out of space. <laughs> Um, well, we've got Richard's team up here. We'll hopefully, you'll be able to sort that out. Um, Boona, would you be able to go and and see if if um. I see you joined. Would you be able to see if Richard's um, his speakers are okay? And uh, yeah, no, when he's right. Cheers. Thank you. So we've got Richard's team up uh, on the screen at the moment. He's got Ryan Button in in goal. Um, the usual, uh, the usual uh, Ryan Button combination. The Duffy, Wambasaka, Kelly Robertson, and Van Dyke. So he's got double Liverpool defenders, Wambasaka as well. So uh, is he going with a three-five-two? This is a four-four-two. This is the this is what the uh, the elite yeah this is the community the community template team virtually barring Duffy it's it looks like it was made like when the game was launched to be honest with you it'd be very very interesting to hear Richard's thoughts on this (laughs) if we okay I've got one question then if we've got time yeah carry on. That's been troubling me, which is the Sterling versus Salah headache for captains. Now, I know uh, you love the history, Steve-O, and that's the way I want to go this season is uh, go with probably not my gut, but go with the history. And that suggests that Sterling will get at least two goals minimum. He's a, he's a short fire point scorer against uh, West Ham away, whereas Salah... Cannot be guaranteed. Oh, I don't know. Any... I, I, I honestly think that the. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I apologise for sounding like a broken record, but I honestly think that this weekend is going to be one of those where Salah, Sterling, and and Kane are going to cancel each other out. I think they're all going to get similar points. If if you want to go safe, I'm stating the obvious. Go Salah. If you want to. Have that captaincy on someone a bit later, Sterling, and then maybe go for Harry Kane if you really want to push push it for that ultimate kind of differential. But for me, Vince, I think I'm going to go Sterling based on what you've just said, the history. But Oh, I thought you were pushing me more back towards Salah. You've made me go back towards Salah now because it's... <laughs> go on, sorry. I was, no, I was just going to say, though, Salah... Versus rubbish teams. Oh, it's it's a scary prospect. Let's just let's just say that. And he I really, I mean, for me, shots I, the other day. Yeah, and in fact, funny enough, I did. I have heard more about that Liverpool Man City game, and it did sound like it was just literally a case of two halves. City did really well in the first half. Liverpool did really well in the second. And I heard Salah did do really well. He looked really he looked really good. And I'm just thinking, right. He looked sharp, but yeah, he just yeah. didn't have the finishing. Like, I mean, it was unlucky not to score that header um, cleared off the line by Walker. I mean, that was very unlucky. But if, um, he, if he had scored on yeah. Sunday, yeah. then it would be 100% captaincy for every single person you and 
that owned him basically. Sterling could have had a hat trick though. Mm. Well, he's going to get he's going to get one versus West Ham. Wink, wink. And this, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He'll either get a hat trick or two goals, so that's guaranteed points there. Whereas Salah hasn't started both other seasons off strongly, so mm. that's maybe eight points. I'm just saying in my head, it's Sterling, but. Yeah, I, I think, like, I, I don't want to keep banging on about it. I think safety Salah, uh, a, a decent, solid um, next option is Sterling. And then if you want to go for a real kind of solid punt, it would be Harry Kane. But it's, it, I just think Salah and Sterling are going to equal each other. I mean, we could be here all flaming guesswork and all day. Let's, let's get know, Richard on, on, on the show, Jason. Let's get Richard in and see if he's available to talk. Let's go and find out one second. Uh, Richard, can you hear us? Hello, Richard. Can you hear us? Not looking good. <laughs> uh, FBR Boona. Uh, clearly, whatever you were saying to Richard, you oh. put him off and speaking to us live. Jason's <laughs> gone as well. No, it's What's fine. happened? I don't know. It's obviously Richard's uh, having technical problems. Um, yeah, no, I've, we've not been able to solve it. No, that's fine. Um, he can come on another time, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, we're um, we're running into the hour and a half mark. I um, don't want the show to go on for too too long tonight. Um, yeah, Steve, -o, um, should we just we just um, call it? Call it. Sorry, what? Do you want to call it? Do you want <laughs> do you want to wrap up the stream now? Well, no, I was just, well, just no. I just wanted to speak to Booner about his oh, team right, because okay. it's it's always some interesting uh, getting Booner's thoughts and everything. Oh, I remember right. we tweeted out earlier on about his team and everything, and uh, I know he posted it recently. Uh, Booner, help me out here. Where did you post it? Because I know for a fact that you were uh, uh, one sec, chaps. It was about forty-five minutes ago. One, I'll find the exact time. Steve wants to go on for another two hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my my team's taken a dramatic twist that I'm not. 100% on it was at, oh, here we are. Uh, 2031. Yeah. Oh, Jason, it's I think everybody's listening to you, mate. Going this 451 formation. 451. So, uh, for, yeah, uh, Boona, rather than um, I, well, I'll, I'll do it for the audio and then I want you to take it away. So, Heaton and Gold, Van Dyke, Robertson, Zinchenko, Wambasaka, Sterling, Mora, Perez, Salah, Fraser, and Wilson. So, go for it, Boona. What's this? change of uh, thought process well i've had um kane and mora in there for about 24 hours now so the longest i've gone with them two in my team and uh <laughs> i just had this kind of brain switch if you like where i was unsure you know I'm, i think my head's kind of been polarized by the fact that i'm going to the game on saturday and then it just hit me that i could go wilson and robertson over Kane and Rico, and I've been st and I've had Rico in there as a starting player. So in my head, I've con I've said, look, Rico, there's, it's not even a foregone conclusion that Rico starts. So let's just imagine one of my 4.0 defenders gets one point, and Kane, you know, even on a good day, scores a brace and you know puts the August hoodoo to bed. That's what 14 points. Mm. That 14 points, Robertson and Wilson could quite easily match. You know, so mm -hmm. I just as much as I don't like it, um, I think I'm going to have to go with it. And I think I'm happy to keep Mora in there because, um, again, I was speaking to some um, people that had gone to the, some mates that had gone to the Spurs game yesterday. And with Deli Ali getting injured, apparently Kane was starting to drop back again a little bit and Mora playing that a little bit further forward. So <laughs> I think I'm just. I'm going to avoid it. Is, um, is Mora somebody that we're all overlooking? 100%, yeah. The mo especially now given Delhi's injury, there's a an increased chance that he could could play beyond game week three, I think, especially if he starts well. Yeah. <laughs> is somebody have... Um... Uh, Shaban, sorry, breaking news. Burnley have made a... Oh, for goodness sake. Ah, there it is. Uh, Burnley have made an 8 million... million pound... yeah. Dale Fry. Oh, never heard of him. Centre uh, for centre Dale Fry. So does that mean that Tarkovsky could be on his way? Obviously, Boona was 
asking me earlier on Twitter about that. I don't think that... Uh, what was it last night? I can't... No, it was last night on the stream. Well, the fact yeah. that if we put in an 8 million bid to Middlesbrough um, suggests to me that uh, it sounds like behind the scenes... Tarkovsky could be on his way for a forty million to Leicester. Sorry, this <laughs> sounds all about the incapability of the Man United board. So, apologise to the whole league for this transfer news. And uh, what's that? Sorry, this Tarkovsky now is because of the Harry Maguire to United, surely. Yes, of course. Which yeah, yeah, in yeah. the last week of the transfer caused maybe five teams to go on alert and mm. bring in a new <laughs> centre back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but um, interesting. Thank you for that information there, Shaban. So, <sighs> the Buna, I mean, you're constantly swapping and changing. I mean, when I say constantly swapping and changing, oh, no, I'm I mean, hating it right now. <laughs> when it, I really am. Um, I, I think, think the, four, the four there, five so. one, the four five one formation is. I like it. I like the four five one. The way to yeah. go. Oh yeah. The way to go. I, I had I had the four five one even before changing Kane and Rico to the other two. It was still four five one, but now I've just kind of you know I'm not playing a four point zero defender, which mm. so many managers on Discord have told me is crazy. Yeah. And I've kind of kind of considered it and thought, yeah, you're probably right. Mm. Yeah. Completely agree with that. Just, just you're not De Bruyne um... in it. Just, just just needs De Bruyne in that team. Yeah, it's two moves out to get De Bruyne in. No, I'm not going for the De Bruyne wagon. I don't want to be like everyone else, which was kind of why I had Harry Kane in there. But um, Rezzy Desi in the in the live chat, I'd asked him because he's also on Fantasy Football Fix, and I'd asked him about the statistics for Mora and Kane. And Kane was 26% apparently in that top 1K threshold, and Mora was only 11%. Mm. So he's in even nicer than Fraser. I'll tell you what, though, that Fraser 34, 36% is quite low, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, I agree. I'm, su I'm surprised considering Fraser's such a. I just well, want to. I just want to say sorry to interrupt, but um, we've had a super chat from Lee Ozzy too in chat. Oh. Um, just want to say thank you ever so much, Lee Ozzy. No hokey cokey with Aubameyang, unlike me, hot sauce. Um, so so yeah, hot sauce there with the uh, hokey cokey. This obviously the cane pick then becomes a, a Bamiyan game week two. So so it's again That's, it's yeah. it's not just Kane for the foreseeable. And of course I, I do I do think a Bamiyang in that you know bolstered Arsenal attack could be really flying underneath so many FPL managers radar and the only problem with the four five one is that you're gonna have to do a multiple moves to get players like a Bamiyang in. Um or or four four two formations that have got um, budget or low, low, low to mid priced striking options. I'm talking about like the likes of Wilson, uh, Wilson and um, Vardy. I do like a uh, Hicks 76 has comment. Let's be honest and agree. We all, we have all had a three, four, three, three, five, two, four, five, one, four, four, two, and five, four, one formation. Well, I haven't. I've had three of them. I've had the three, five, two, four, five, one, and four, four, two. I've never ever gone with four, five, four, one, or a three, four, three this yeah, season. Not at all. Not three, four, wow. three. Not, I've not gone with a three, four, three. Last season I did quite a lot. Um, but <clears> yeah, I've gone with either five in defence or five in midfield so far. Oh, and no, sorry, and the four, four, two, which I've yeah. So three of those. Yes. I like your four, four, two. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Abuna, you were just talking about the Discord and everything. I, I always ask you this question because it's always interesting. But talking, just adding to the, the topic of the night, really, about uh, what information or tips you would give to, well, basically amateurs and newbies of the game. Um, mm -hmm. more, uh, we've already read out what you said on Twitter, but for you, how do you think Discord helps people in general, even for the... Um, well, let's be honest here, the hardcore players. How How is Discord helping people like yourself? Well, it's just kind of, you know, for me personally, I think it's been a, a bit of a wake-up call that, you know, stop overthinking it and trying to be so different when <laughs> simple is often better. And I think I was kind of finding myself going into that trap with Kane and Rico. When you really think about it and you look at, the points potential of the two players compared to the, the other two I've bought in, um, I'm probably a lot better off now. So, you know, it's good to hear advice from different FPR managers because they're all going to have different perspectives and they're not all going to be like, you know, they're not all going to be yes-mans and be like, yeah, your team's good. 
they're going to say what they don't like. And I'm the same. Like, I'm the first to criticise someone if I don't like their team because at the end of the day, you know, what's the point just saying, yeah, you know, your team's perfect if you don't really think that? And don't just... And, and the thing is, the manager's in there. We don't just say, oh, I don't like it and, and kind of leave it there. There's often, like, positive, constructive kind of thought process behind it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, for ex- just to name check one particular manager in there, I've seen um, Davey P. Mm. He's been helping considerably, especially, um, I'm sure Defender will confirm, but Defender, as you know, was going for that uh, symmetrical FC, shall we call it. Um, ah, yes. But then, you know, he, he didn't really have the long term vision, which Davey kind of instilled within him. So he's a lot, you know, better structured now, should we say. So if you're not already in there, you know, come in because it's a friendly bunch of people, friendly managers. And, you know, we're on stream right now, but during the day we often go into hangouts and we have these sort of conversations amongst ourselves. Uh, absolutely. I have a mic muted. The link is now in uh, chat. And if you aren't already in the discord, you can join it through the link. Um, thank you, Bina, for that about discord. Um, it's, it's, you, we can't stress enough how, how it brings you guys together it really does it's so many different conversations so many different channels and the voice chat ability with you guys is just the icing on the cake really to have you guys discussing it um but yeah we've got we, if you walk we've got time to have someone else um come in on the uh, on the stream i don't want it to go for two for over two hours really this evening i've got i've got other commitments going on but um but steve-o um is there any further points you want to discuss no, I want to wrap up and uh, and uh, be able to go to bed. Yeah. Guys, oh, well, actually, I need, I need, sorry, go on, Steve. No, I will make this exclusive. I am planning on potentially doing an early morning stream tomorrow for our Australian, New Zealand, Southern Hemisphere friends uh, tomorrow morning just to kind of um, get them a bit nice. more involved before the... Uh, the season kicks off because it's i'm only going to be able to do it it's either going to be tomorrow or th- when is it thursday morning it may be first i may actually do it thursday morning um because that way Fantastic. it's like the day before the day before uh what do you call it the, the season actually kicks off so i think we'll actually have a lot to discuss um that particular morning so yes excellent well thank you ever so much guys for tuning into the stream um, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please consider doing so and hitting that notification bell so you know when we go live. Um, also, if you've enjoyed the stream, hit that like button. We got, we haven't mentioned it yet, but we got 100 likes on our last video, which we were just thought. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Un- unbelievable. Um, so thank you ever so much for that, guys. Um, hopefully we can possibly get that again or beat it. You never know. Um, but yeah, streams all this week. And steve also mentioned that he's going to be going live tomorrow morning, possibly as well, which is great for the uh, Oceanic guys in the community that don't always get ch- chance to tune in at this time of day. Um, thanks to Boona, thanks to Vince Chapman and all the other callers we've had on this evening. It's always great to hear your thoughts and to share your opinions. And um, look forward to doing it again tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks, absolutely. Thank you. Cheers now, guys. For having me, guys. Cheers, Vince. Take care. I, just, just an interest. Where, whereabouts are you? Not, not in the world, but are you near like a an industrial machine or something? It's very. Uh, two seconds. Uh, just ask a couple of questions. I just need to get the door for yeah, a second. No Sorry. Problem, this mate. is this is what happens when you're lying. Dad, what's going on? Uh, not a lot really. I'm waiting to go to gym. What about yourself? Um. Live on YouTube doing a stream. Why do you feel that you're constantly changing your team, mate? Is it just, it's just, just so many so, ideas? So many ideas, so many different perspectives. I br- I blame Brett Mollison for his five at back because when you see my new team. <laughs> wow. Brighton home, they couldn't buy a goal in the little last season. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Dan's got Dan's got Glenn Murray. I think he'll have a word to say about that. <laughs> no. I'm detecting possibly a German accent. I'm probably completely way out, but where are you calling us from? South Africa. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the first day. I literally just typed in FPL, like first draft, and yours came up like first. Mm. So I thought, oh, I'll watch one of the live streams when it comes on. And then I thought, this is a bit long, isn't it? About two hours in. 
and then three hours later, <laughs> well, an hour later, I was like, yeah, they seem all right, you know. Well, Steven's well, not that bad. I have one. Que I have one question for you. I, I want. Um, I want you to predict the order of the elite FPL ranking. So, like, <laughs> who, who do you think will? Who do you think will finish first, second, and third out of y'all three? This so it's certainly no disrespect to Dan, but it's certainly going to be between me and Jason. And right <laughs> now, as it stands, I I'd go with Jason because my history suggests that I'm going to be having a bad season. So I've got the. Uh... The five at the back, I just see a lot of value there. I feel like if I if I don't have Salah, I can spread the money elsewhere and maybe maybe get the points another way. Um, All the teams now, except for obviously Salah and Sterling, these players, a lot of players are going to change towards the start of the season just because of new transfers, um, injuries that could happen and every, all of that so for me to tell you now like personally right now I'd say definitely if Tammy Abraham or Batshuayi are cheap I'd get one of them just because I don't care about the Man United we can score against them at least two or three Hey guys, this season we're using Discord. It's a text and voice application where you can talk all things FPL with fellow community members. You can post your team in the Rate My Team, talk in the general chat, you can look at transfer news, look at awesome gifts, sign up for our Cash Mini League, look at our previous podcasts and even join us live on air in one of our streams. We look forward to seeing you guys. Link is in the description or look at the code on screen.